Dominic Reyes versus John Jones. So I'm sure some of you are aware this fight happened when when did it happen? A while back ago? Sure, a while back? Yeah, a while back. I say a while back. Um last weekend, um John Jones faced Dominic Reyes for another defense of his um light heavyweight title. I think prior to the actual uh fight itself, a few people kind of ripped the fight off, I think, for the most part, because you know, John Jones has defeated every challenge that's come across him. He's he's looked maybe human against Oven Saint Peru OSP. Apart from that, he's dominated everyone else that he's basically faced, and there's been calls for him to kind of go up to heavyweight to kind of challenge himself, and so we can see the, the new fresher John. And with Dominic Reyes as well, it's hard to read him as an actual MMA fighter. He's not got that much experience, even though he's won. I think is it thirteen fights? I think it's thirteen, or he's had thirteen fights, or twelve fights, or whatever it may be. So um. He's got a pretty decent record, but not you know not as extensive as someone like John Jones, of course. And for the most part, most of his kind of you know highlight reel wins have come from knockout, right? I think left high kick, left high kick, and left straight hook. I think so, right? So that's usually the kind of finish that you see from him. So nothing very, not not a lot of wrestling, not a lot of grounding pounds. I think there might be a submission in one of them. I'm not too sure one of these finishes. I forgot which one it was. Uh, might have been a rear naked choke or someone. I'm not sure who. But for the most part, you know, it's, he, he he looked like the kind of guy that he, the only way he's going to win against someone like Jones is basically to knock him out. And if you know anything about John Jones, you know he's got a his arsenal is just too much. You can't just go in there hoping to knock him out because what we also proved, especially in this fight and maybe even with Gustafson. You know, John Jones got a pretty good good chin. Like for somebody that for somebody that fights where he does, because it's not really a thing usually, right? I look, I think of somebody like um uh Michael Benham Page, right? He doesn't have the best of, of chin. Um when he does get hit, he kinda goes down. But with John Jones, you kind of get the feeling that he puts a pressure on you. He has a huge arsenal of skills. He's obviously got that mean heel streak in him where he can kind of go um completely dark. And kind of you know spark you out and ground and pound you on the floor like he did to like um uh, Daniel Cormier, but again it was you know once you show the fight happened what was going on for myself I tend I I decided to stay up that night um incorrectly I ended up having to go out the Sunday the following Sunday in the afternoon which was an absolute horror show so I was an absolute zombie but you know I like to watch these things live I kind of feel as if like even though a lot not a lot of people that I follow on social watch UFC I always get a feeling I'm going to stumble across the um what you call it the the winner of who the kind of you know the spoilers of who won and stuff so i prefer just watch it straight live so i'm watching the fight and obviously it, uh, oh um just to kind of get to the end of the whole point of the issue um john jones ended up winning right by a split decision via the judges but the scoring was really weird again i wouldn't say it was a robbery i think a lot of people have kind of mentioned it prior um it obviously wasn't a robbery um i don't think anyone's gonna go out and say yeah they categorically think um uh John Jones was the better man or Dominic Reyes was either. But I think judging in MMA or UFC, I like I like the fact that for as much because I remember there was a there was a point in time where a lot of UFC fans or MMA fans were a bit snobbish and a little bit arrogant when it came to um corruption, right? In boxing, right? They were like, Oh, it can never happen in our sport. Our sport is clean, our sport is pure, right? But obviously as more popular the sport has become, you know. Usada's got involved. Um, essentially, they've essentially eradicated PEDs for the most part. There are people who can obviously get away with it if they've got the resources and the money to do it. But for the most part, it's very hard to cheat if you're an MMA and UFC, right? But there was an issue with PEDs and performance science and drugs previously, or steroids, whatever you're going to call them. Um, they've kind of got a grip on that. But for the most part, the idea, the, the most kind of corrupt part of boxing that people kind of allege is corrupt is the ref, is the judging, sorry. Maybe the refereeing may become second, but for the most part, it's the judging. The judging is the thing that really affects boxing for the most part because that's where most of the money, especially in Vegas, is made, right? On the betting odds. Um, a lot of people's career trajectories, a lot of people's brand sponsorships. There's a lot of kind of, you know, greasing of the palms, you know, slipping of the money in the front pocket, like in a mafia movie going on in boxing. And unfortunately, because the UFC has to deal with uh, commissions, state commissions, wherever they kind of fight, who all have their own individual procedures and they all have their own host of... No, it's weird. They have individual commissions in each state, but then usually it's the same judges that um, officiate most of the fights. It's like a... I don't know. Let's say there's like a, a database of 50 people. It feels as if they just kind of select a, a random five and get them to go and um, officiate or to judge fights, which is odd because, you know, these judges for the most part, even if they are experts, which I, I highly doubt they are, 
if they are experts, they're experts in judging boxing fights, right? Which are completely different to MMA. MMA, you've got the addition of, you know, knees, legs, I don't know, your whole leg, your elbow, your, you know, you've got the wrestling component of it. Um, you've got the grappling component of it. It's just an incredibly weird thing to suggest that somehow a boxing judge could have somehow judge, you know, an MMA fight or a UFC fight. It just doesn't make any sense. So essentially, so essentially, those judges, you know, fucked it up for Dominic Reyes, and somehow, someone uh, I forgot who the guy was. I think it was the guy that Joe Rogan called out, stated that I think when he judged it, he said he had John Jones up three two, which is insane because I think if you look at the fight, you'd say the first two rounds Dominic Reyes had right. It's a five round fight. Dominic Reyes had two the first two rounds for sure, right? The third round I'm not too sure about, right? But then the fourth and the fifth, you'd probably you definitely say Jones, but. To say that somehow Jones won it clearly 3-1 or like other people have said or 4-1 or whatever it may be is insane. It's literally insane because he lost the first two rounds. He might have drawn the third. But then by the time it comes to the last two, the fight's already done, right? For the most part. It's just an insane way to do it. And the problem and the sad thing about someone like Adamic Reyes is that even if he does get the rematches, it's probably unlikely. We know how John Jones performs in rematches, right? He usually, you know, absolutely dominates the opponent because he's kind of, you know, he's kind of downloaded his de- your database of, en- of information and he's going to now be able to kind of enact what he needs to do in the next second round, second fight. But also, on Dominic Reyes' side, to be kind of sad for him is that if you're John Jones' team, you're not going to encourage him to go and take this. You're not going to encourage John Jones to fight Dominic Reyes again because you don't know how good Dominic Reyes might get between now and the next fight either, right? Because... If we've seen, if if any, if anything we've noticed in UFC, as much as people kind of grow exponentially or kind of their skill set goes, like the structure of their skill set goes, especially if they concentrate. Like I look at someone like a Valentina Zhitchenko, she's always been very talented, but her level that she's at now is just like on another. She's just on another level. Uh, even though Jorge Masvidal, Masvidal was the same sort of thing, right? He you know had the had kind of an, an epiphany and he completely changed the way he approached fights, and now he looks a completely different person. As much as it can go that way, it can also go the other way down, right? I look at someone like a BJ Penn, right? Suddenly, you know, of course, BJ Penn might be other issues involved there, but how can you somehow go from being, you know, one of the best in your weight class and, a, you know, a living legend to suddenly go to someone that can't win a fight in a flipping, you know, you can't even win a fight against a bouncer in the middle of, you know, Hawaii somewhere, right? So if you're John Jones' team, you're like, you know what? Let's let's hold off fighting this guy again. This hung, young, hungry lion who's a legitimate athlete who, you know, was unfortunate not to get selected for the uh, for the NFL. Now has kind of adopted his skills as a boxer. Has really good movement, you know. Has really good boxing skills. Like he legitimately looked. Because it's weird. Because whenever you see a UFC fighter fight, especially when they they're kind of more boxing orientated, they never usually have the right. They never usually have a very good. I bet maybe it's the way you kind of move in the ring anyway. And octagon is different. They would do in the ring, but. Dominic Reyes looked at maybe the the first maybe one I've seen so far who kind of had that a, a legit boxing style. Someone that he looked at, like he could actually box for real. Not like, you know, MMA box, which is a completely different type of boxing. But yeah, man, like, I'm really kind of um, bummed for uh, Dominic Reyes. I think, again, I think he, he, but the good thing for him is that he put a good showing on. I think a lot of people like myself who weren't that sure about him and kind of thought he was just a one punch bang kind of guy and wasn't necessarily that skilled as an MMA fighter. We've kind of been proven completely wrong. He is a legit talent at that weight class and he will give a lot of people problems. For someone like John Jones going forward, the issue is that what's happening? Is this an indication that John Jones' skills or his um his ability to finish people in a way that he did? previously his creativity his brutality his athleticism is this an indication that he's on the wane or is it just the fact that he's not feeling motivated fighting the people that he's fighting because you know as bad as it may seem or sound if you're john jones there must be a part of you that believes that you can absolutely beat anyone in that weight class because you've obviously proven it right no one can come close to you you legitimately think you're the baddest man on the planet so it's quite hard to work yourself up to get up to the point of like giving a shit about a fight when you know if you, even your ten percent could knock most people out, right? And if you believe the rumors, he wasn't you know necessarily taking this training camp that serious either. He might have been out, you know, doing the old uh, doing the old devil's dandruff, right, and dancing with the old uh, chicas in Las Vegas casinos. Um, so that might have been the issue. So there is probably something in the idea that maybe we need to see John Jones at heavyweight sooner rather than later because that's the only way we're going to see someone motivated and hungry because at the moment he doesn't 
seem it or want to be on that position at all. He's probably like way away from that. So again, more questions than answers really on the John Jones side. For the Reyes side of it, again, I think he's a beast. I think he's going to give a lot of people problems. I think no one's going to really want to fight him because he's obviously shown that he can, you know, defend a takedown against John Jones. The same John Jones that ragdolled Daniel Cormier around who was an Olympic gold medalist, right? So <laughs> if that's the case, then I wouldn't want to fight Dominic Reyes even. I just think it's a very sad situation for all involved i think it would have been nice to get Re even if reyes had the belt for one for one fight i think it would have been nice just to have the idea that you know he he broke john jones record and if john jones to come and fight him again to get the record back i think that would have been, we would have seen probably an, a very very motivated john jones in that regard as well but you know it's not to be it is what it is um good showing for all involved and again um, a very interesting card like i said the valentina Jachenko fight was was astounding as well the the level of like uh, that's the reason why I like I really like watching MMA. I think combat sports in general is that sometimes, especially being from the UK or being from Europe, I, you tend to mostly watch the, you know football, what we call here soccer, and that's the only sport you be, you legitimately watch. And maybe with the exception of maybe tennis, I would say. So it's hard to get a gauge on. So when it comes to American sports, we don't really know what's the we don't really have a rough gauge or estimate about who's the best at anything because there's no reference point, right? I can't really tell you. For me, all running backs in the NFL look the same, right? Because they just run, right? All quarterbacks are the same because they just throw the ball. I can't necessarily tell the difference between a Mahomes and a flipping, you know, I don't know, whoever the other guy is, right? I can't tell any difference between them. But combat sports, because it's not, you know, especially MMA or the UFC, because it's quite a young sport and something I've kind of followed um, quite for a long time, I've seen it develop over time. Um, I've obviously taken a few, you know, group on Muay Thai kickboxing classes and stuff. So I know where I am stand at level wise. I know what I've seen in classes. And I also know what I've seen, you know, maybe 10 years ago in the UFC. So to see where it's got now and to see high level people, right, standing in that octagon, man or woman, and try to figure out a way to take someone else, someone's head off who happens to be as equally as skilled as you is so entertaining man it's probably the best thing to watch honestly it really it really gives you a like you know sometimes you know what happens when you watch boxing you tend to um, maybe it's speaking from, from my own experience but when i when i watch boxing i tend to get a very um heightened or i tend to get the sense of delusion like i get delusions of grandeur like i said i tend to go out there thinking yeah i'm mike tyson you know i can knock someone out left hook right hook uppercut right jab 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 um, it tends to make you think a bit more of yourself than what you actually are. But I think with MMA or UFC, in my experience, when I watch it, it really humbles me. Because it's like, wow, if you if ever there was a time to understand that you shouldn't mess with anyone, it's watching an MMA fight. Because some of these guys, especially some of the dudes in like the welterweight division, you would never, even some of the heavyweights, like you bump into that guy in the street, unless you have an idea of what an MMA fight looks like, you would never know. You pick a fight with this person or you want to show it in front of your friends or act a big man and you could potentially you know be out unconscious on the on the concrete you right? know having no idea what happened to you so <laughs> i think that's the best part of watching it you get very very you get very humbled man you get very very humbled you're like oh, wow these guys know what the, these guys know what they're doing they're not to go but yeah um good showing for dominic reyes and again i think um i think we've got some we got some interesting questions and stuff to look forward to for John Jones' the next fight, man. Because I don't think it's going to be a doozy. That's for sure. We know we know that he's not at his best at the moment. Maybe it's because of lack of a competition, but we also know that maybe Father Time is going to catch up with all of us, isn't it? As some a lot of um, MA analysts always say, when Father Time comes, it doesn't really, you know, ask for your opinion. It just kind of comes along and says, "Hey, by the way, it's over now. You got to move on." But yeah, let's move on as well.